Have you always wanted to learn how to run a metal lathe? You're in the right place. Gavin Gay here from makingwithmetal.com and Gavin Tube right here on YouTube. I'm partnering with the company Precision Matthews to bring you not just the fundamentals of lathe, but also the fundamentals of mill. Two different series that are gonna start out at 100 level content and work our way all the way up through advanced 400 level material. This is gonna be awesome. If you wanted to learn how to run metalworking equipment, this is the series for you. So make sure you subscribe to GavinTube with notifications, and I wanted to invite you to kick things off here with Lathe Fundamentals 101, which is safety. We always start with safety. The goals, we don't do harm to ourselves, we don't do harm to the machine, and we don't do harm to the work. So let's start at the very beginning. Dress for success. With regard to lathe safety, the first thing we need to pay attention to is ourselves. First, if you have long hair, make sure it's secured and is completely contained behind your head and down your back. The last thing you want is for hair to be hanging down over the front to get caught in the work or to get caught in the chuck jaws. Best case scenario, it rips your hair off. Worst case scenario, you get partially scalped or your head hits the chuck jaws or the work. You really, really don't want that. So make sure your hair is secured and out of the way. Then we need to look at our clothing. No loose clothing, no sleeves, no neckties. Anything that can get caught in the work or the chuck jaws eventually will. And fabric does not tear easily. It's very strong. So you don't want your arms or your body to get sucked into the lathe. No loose clothing ever. Okay, the last thing we need to look at is eyewear and jewelry. I'm wearing a ring here, so I'm gonna need to take that off. I like to keep a tote next to the lathe for my personal effects. That way I remember to take them off and I remember to put them back on and they don't get lost. So I'm gonna switch out my regular glasses, which are better than nothing, but not quite adequate for complete safety with wraparound safety glasses. There, now we're ready. Know your safety controls. This lathe is the lathe that I'll be using in this series. It's a Precision Matthews PM1440 GT. It's pretty typical of the type of lathe that you'd find in a machine shop for general purpose tasks. The first thing I did when I got this lathe was to familiarize myself with the controls. In fact, I had read the manual two or three times before I even got it. The most important of these features is the safety features. Know where the controls are. The spindle control lever is a safety feature, even though it's just a feature that you're gonna use on the lathe, the control that you're gonna use as you use the lathe. Knowing how to stop the lathe quickly will definitely help you. There was a time when I was in junior high, I had a shirt tail sticking out, running a Rockwell lathe, whole class of kids, and I was running the lathe, and the lead screw was turning slowly. It sucked my shirt tail in, which then sucked me into the lathe. Fortunately, I knew the controls was able to reverse the spindle with the spindle control lever. I slowly backed my way out, tucked my shirt in, which had grease stripes from the lead screw on it, and the class never knew anything that had happened. I saved a little bit of face there, but that was really a wake-up call for me. It's gotta be muscle memory. It's gotta be instinct. You wanna know where your controls are for your motor and your feeds. Know how to turn them off, first and foremost. The brake. <laughs> It's going to stop the spindle almost instantly. It's also a handy tool that you can use when you don't want the chuck or spindle to rotate when you're tightening and loosening things, that sort of a thing. And the stop button. This is probably the most important one. If we're running the lathe, it's going to stop the lathe. And it actually takes twisting this particular model to rearm the lathe so that we can turn the spindle back on. So even with the control lever in the run position, the stop button will override it. We have to manually reset it. That is a really good safety feature. So before you go, make sure you know your lathe safety features. Keep things in order. A clean shop is a safe shop and your lathe is no exception. You need to make sure that your tools are nearby, but they're not gonna fall into the machine while it's running. That could be very bad for your measurement instruments and tools, and it could be very bad for your lathe. 
I do like to have everything close by, but I make sure that there's little walls and barriers so that nothing can fall off of the headstock or my splash guard tray, that kind of thing. And it just helps to make sure that A, you can work efficiently and B, nothing bad is gonna happen. So keep your lathe in order, be happy and be safe. Chuck safety, this is probably the most important part of lathe safety because the chuck is one of the more dangerous areas of the metal lathe. I have my chuck keys over on the side. They're in arm's reach, but they are not ever, ever left in the chuck. If you leave the key in the chuck, which is a, seems like a nice way to store it, you go to turn that lathe on, it's gonna come at you and it's gonna come fast. Never, ever, ever leave a key in the truck. I hate seeing that. Sorry to be a grouchy shop teacher, but nothing bothers me more than that. You also want to make sure that your chuck is secured to the spindle very, very well. This is a D15 cam lock, which means each of the cams have to be tightened in a particular sequence, and you want to make sure that they're all evenly torqued. Otherwise, you could have a serious problem. Probably the most dangerous scenario with securing a chuck to the spindle is the threaded type. Older lathes like by South Bend Model 9A have a threaded on chuck. Pretty easy to put on. The problem is if you reverse the spindle, the inertia of the chuck can cause it to back off and your chuck can go flying. Definitely not good. You also want to make sure that the chuck jaws, especially when they're opened, let's go ahead and open these real quick. When they project from the outer body of the chuck, these are like rotating hammers. They will take out whatever is in their way, especially if we're running the spindle at a high speed, like 2000 RPM. When these babies are whipping around, you don't want tools in the way, especially the compound or the tool post. You don't want your hands in the way. You don't want tools in the way like files. Last thing about chuck safety is it's safest to run a chuck when the chuck jaws or the collet are clamped on work. Otherwise, they're loose and the inertia of the spinning chuck can actually cause them to back out, fly out. Chuck jaws can fly in any direction and hurt you, kill you, break your window, whatever. So, be a safe chuck lathe operator. Be mindful of your metal chips. The chips that collect on the lathe, that get wrapped around the work, that get in the way, are tempting to grab out with your hands, but you don't wanna do that for a number of reasons. One, you're getting your hands very close to the rotating work, the jaws, and other things, and that's bad. And second, these chips can be incredibly sharp, razor sharp. So if you need to proceed at your own risk here, use something like needle nose pliers to pull the chips out of the way. If something hits the tip of the pliers, it's gonna be a lot a uh, better situation than if it was your hands. Finally, the chips are hot, so that's another reason not to use your hands. They can be burning hot and burn your fingers. That is definitely not a good thing. Finally, you can use specific cutting tools, different inserts for cutting tools that have integrated chip breakers. That's a feature that causes the chip to curl back on itself and break. Shorter chips are actually safer than longer screw chips or spiral chips because they can fall out of the way, they don't collect up, and they're just less of a nuisance. You don't have to grab them out with your pliers. So think about your chips. Keep those hands out of danger. It might be tempting to rest your hands in a spot that's too close to rotating parts or the work. You might be tempted to rest your hand in a place where it could get pinched Always be mindful of the motion of the machine, and when in doubt, stop the spindle. I'll show you. Even if you're taking a cut, even if it's a precise cut, you can actually stop the machine like this. I'm gonna start a cut here. Uh-oh, we need to check something. Let's stop the spindle. Okay, we're gonna do whatever we need to do. Remove some chips, take a measurement, whatever. Okay, we're just gonna continue. And now we were safe. That was good. Okay, so I'm gonna stop the cut.
When in doubt, stop the spindle. When in doubt, keep your hands well away from anything that's moving, anything that's going to pinch, anything that's going to hit, anything that's going to suck it into the machine. It's better to be safe than sorry. Sanding and filing while the lathe is in motion is dangerous. Proceed cautiously. If you do this, you do this at your own risk. But there's some things you can do to reduce that risk. If you're using sandpaper, make sure you have a long strip of sandpaper so that when you start to sand, you can keep your hands away from the truck jaws, away from the spindle in a safe proximity. If you're gonna use a file, make sure that your file has a handle on it. That way, if the file kicks back at you, you've got a nice surface there so that it doesn't pierce right into your hand. Make sure that you support both sides of the file, keeping your fingers away from the rotating jaws of the truck. If you can, move the work out from the truck. And finally, collets are safer than chucks in this particular case because there isn't the chuck jaws, there isn't as much danger. You can get closer in a more safe way. So sand and file safely. Be careful with long work. One of the dangers of running a lathe is running a really long piece of stock and having that piece of stock, if it's thin especially, start to whip and when it whips, it's gonna get sucked out and go flying and that's not good. How can you avoid this? You can use an outboard spider. This is a custom spider that I built for my lathe. You can use a stock tube that supports and stiffens the work or you can use a combination of the two, better yet. So be safe with long stock. Whew, that is a lot to remember, but worry not. Over on makingwithmetal.com, I'm gonna have a downloadable, printable lathe safety checklist so that you can remember all of these guidelines. And hey, if you think I missed something, please drop a comment here on YouTube and over at makingwithmetal.com. Make sure you subscribe to Gavin Tube with notifications because I got a lot of cool stuff I'm gonna be talking about and I wanna guide you through the process of becoming successful in your metalworking hobby or profession. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Until next time, happy machining.